Hey, Andy here, and welcome to the first of my videos showing the progress of a new painting I've started just this evening. So, what am I showing here? Well, you can see I've penciled in a blue grid, and I'm now working over it, roughly drawing out an idea of the forms and shadows, which in the next layer I'll be defining as I ink them in. So why blue? Uh, it's a colour animators use when roughing out their ideas of form. Uh, it's light, it disappears when much darker colours in the later correcting layers are drawn over the top. Well, I use that to my advantage as you'll see uh, in the next couple of videos I'll be uploading in the next day slash two. Hi, Andy here with the second in my sequence of painting videos. This time I'm focusing on inking in lines over the previous penciling in. You can see I'm using burnt umber acrylic paint and you may get that I'm not so concerned with filling in shapes, volumes, texture or form, but in outlining strong changes in tone and points where detail needs to be focused on. I use a variety of lines, some tight, others are a lot more gestural. The point to my mind for this layer is about recognising the beginnings of a structure, a scaffold, so to put the later paint layers over. There's a brief moment leading into the second half of this video where my phone's camera reset itself and I had to switch everything off and then restart. Interestingly, the camera settings were off, but this Howard actually helps point out just how blue pencil disappears. An effect that obviously animators do use to their advantage. It's Andy here, this time looking at the wash layer. In this layer, I stain the whole panel one colour, at the same time washing away the blue pencil lines while leaving the brown lines from the inking in layer behind. Using water, ultramarine and burnt umber acrylic paint, I blend a greyish mix and then introduce cadmium yellow, pushing for a pale greyish olive oil tint. The colour I'm looking at when mixing for this layer is not that of the bulk of the paint, but the thin bit where the white of the plate shows through. So why do I want to remove the white of the gesso? Well, Gesso uses a mix of gypsum and white pigment for its toothiness and whiteness, but the downside is that the white is a different type to the titanium white that I use in the later layers of oil paint. The wash layer also acts as a great way to harmonise the painting, giving it an overall balance in colour, as all colours placed over the top will be tinted slightly by this underlayer. Andy here, with the next video showing the fourth layer in my process. I'm painting in thinned burnt umber acrylic paint. This is the first of two umber layers. In this first umber layer, I establish contrast in tone in a fairly blunt manner, developing shadows, establishing basic ideas of volume, and picking out dark silhouetted forms from the background whilst leaving the lighter areas untouched. You can see the umber I'm applying nicely complements the lines I established in the inking in layer. Andy again, this time with the fifth layer, the second of the two umber layers. You may notice finesse and subtlety have started entering into the painting through my mark making. I'm starting to graduate tones, making them more complex, and starting to introduce an idea of texture through my brush mark. I'm adding to the definition of volumes and the deepening of the shadows too. In this layer, you'll notice a peculiarity of umber that when layered, dark tones increase markedly, but so too does the warmth of the painting. A difficult tone to explain, as it's more than just that the painting is in the red-orange end of the spectrum, is that the painting exudes a visual warmth through the depth, saturation and the complex layering of the colour. You'll also see that the forms in the painting are starting to gain a sense of a space and a physicality of sorts. It's Andy here, with the sixth video where I look at the black and white layer. This is the last of the underpainting layers, and the last of the acrylic paint layers too. Everything you see here is a scaffold for the following oil paint layers to sit on top of. You'll see that this is the layer where the full structure of the painting seems to come alive. Starting with titanium white acrylic paint, I pinpoint the lightest and brightest areas. I do this first, as the white has not yet been used for mixing, so there's no colour contamination of the paint or the water. I then swap to process black acrylic, filling in voids, emphasising shadows and dark forms. When happy, 
I mix the black with the white and use the resulting greys to bring out various forms, reflections and textures. So why a black and white layer? The black and white pigments are quite stark and can be classed as cold. This coldness counteracts the extreme warmth of the previous umber layers. I don't aim to completely cover what I've painted, but I want to use the marks and layering to help inform what is yet to come. Andy here again, with the seventh video, this time showing the first colour layer. This is the first of three finishing layers, all of which are painted in oil paint. After allowing the painting to dry for a few days, so that all the water has evaporated from the previous acrylic layers, I begin by wiping on, and then wiping off a thin layer of refined linseed oil over the surface of the new painting, making the surface ready. The main body colours I use are Ultramarine, Burnt Umber, Cadmium Red, Cadmium Yellow, and Titanium White, along with the secondary incidental colours of Cobalt Blue and Alizarin Crimson. The painting medium I use for this layer is a mix of 10% refined linseed oil with 90% gum of turpentine. This is to get the paint I use to a double cream-like consistency. This is not a glaze. I work on the painting, introducing body colour to forms, allowing some areas to stay the same, whilst blocking in others. It's Andy here, with the eighth video looking at the second colour layer. This is the second of three finishing layers painted in oil paint. After allowing the painting to cure for a few days, I gently wipe on and then wipe off a very thin layer of refined linseed oil again, this time trying to not disturb or oversaturate the surface. The medium I use in this layer is a 50% to 50% mix of pure gum turbantine with refined linseed oil. I aim to make my paint thicker in consistency than the previous layer. Using the same colours as in the previous layer, I correct and tighten shadows, forms and highlights, darkening or lightening as needed. I also introduce more complexity into areas requiring more subtlety of touch and tone. It's Andy here, with the ninth and final video. This finishing layer is painted in oil paint. After allowing the painting to cure for a few days, I gently wipe on and then wipe off a very thin layer of refined linseed oil. Again, trying to not disturb the surface. This time, I'm using a painting medium of 80% pure gum turpentine to 20% stand oil. This mix can be considered a glazing medium. The stand oil is incredibly sticky and is able to hold pigment in place in a way that refined linseed oil cannot when painted thinly. Using the same paint and colour palette, I model gradients, adding subtlety of colour and tone, sometimes in quite thin ways. I go across the painting, picking out details, defining elements, and picking out the brightest areas, making them stand out, and any brightly coloured areas are heightened too. And that's it. The painting's now complete. Thank you for watching.